Okay, And when we're talking about mesh refinement, what we're talking about is actually taking multiple meshes, um, joining them together, making sure that anywhere there might be overlapping vertices or coincident vertices, we weld them together, right? And they're, then by, they're by treating the collection of meshes as one single continuous element. And this is, you know, again, where a lot of the power in working with meshes um, exists. Now, if I take these three elements and I bring them back into Grasshopper, okay, so I have them here in Grasshopper. I'm going to disconnect my subdivision modeling uh, tools right here and bring them down. And what we want to do uh, whenever we start to work with a mesh, a uh, collection of meshes rather, um, what we want to do is, is treat them as one. And to do that, you have to go through a process. And that process involves, again, joining, welding, um, and then unifying uh, the mesh to make sure that um, all of the normals, um, the faces, et cetera, that they're all facing the same direction. Now, in mesh utility, that's where we're going to find all the components to be able to do this. And um, you'll see that we have a component for mesh join. We have a component for weld. And we have a component for unifying normals. It's all really neat stuff. So if we look at the file 1-3, you can see that we've outlined that process for you here to make sure that everybody's uh, you know, comfortable and understanding how to do this. Join the meshes, weld the meshes, and unify them. So we can see that right here. We join them, we weld them, we unify them. Once that's done, you can bring it right down and take advantage of the smoothing. So let's go ahead and take, the, um, take care of that. Let's say, let's join our meshes. We're going to weld our meshes. And I'm going to make a little note. Check tolerance. And then we're going to unify our mesh normals. This is really uh, to uh, ensure uh, directionality is consistent. So our meshes come in. Under utility, we're going to say join. So this is mesh join. I'm managing my previews by turning off the, the previous uh, primitive. And now we just have this guy visible. When we do that, let's take a look under the uh, params input for panel. And let's see um, what's coming out. So if we take the output of this into our panel, you'll see that we have here, um, in the case of, of the example that we're looking at, we have three meshes. Okay, So here there are eight. Um, faces, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The bottom we have eight, and in the middle we have four. One, two, three, four, right? This is the, the kind of connection in the middle. Once we take it and join, we'll have one mesh. Sixteen plus four is twenty. So now the three meshes that came in are being treated as one. The next step, let's go to utility and say weld vertices. Now if you remember, each basic element is composed of a collection of vertices that are entered in the face command. Now the bridging element that we have here will have 
coincident vertices here and here with the mesh here. And the idea is, is to make sure that we get rid of all of that. So let's take our mesh into here, manage our previews, and take a look at what's coming out of here now. Thirty-two vertices. So we had originally three meshes with a total of 48 vertices and 20 faces. When we weld anywhere there are coincident vertices, our mesh changes to have only 32, although the face count is still the same. And that, that should make sense because if we take a look using our mesh decompose again, here at our vertices, at the corner where we have our hole, right, we can see that this vertex is shared um, across this face, this face, this face, this guy, and that guy. So there is redundancy, right, and this component removes that for us. So I'm going to say mesh weld. All right, so then, if we take a look at what happens when we smooth this mesh output. Now, if you remember, this is now the welded mesh. So I'm just going to bring that into our subdivision component. I'm going to be turning off redundant previews. We can see here that now the smoothing is happening across all of our elements. It's really great. Again, the process for doing this, this is our WB or Weberberg uh, Catmull Clark. This is our output, the subdivided mesh. I'm going to change the color of, uh, of this uh, right here to, to red, just as a little note for us. We have our input. We join it. We weld it, and we smooth it. This is our output. So let's bake this. I'm going to close Grasshopper. And if we compare the two of these, right, you can see pretty clearly the difference. This is treated as three separate elements, whereas this is treated as one continuous element. Now, an important thing to note, back here, when we created our, um, our bridge, if you remember, we specified the number of faces um, to have in Z. If I come over here to Mesh and I say, make a box again, and this time I say, in Z, I want to have a lot more. I want to have um, four. If I select my face again, this time let's do it mesh, edit, and delete mesh faces. We'll do it this way. Enter, enter. If I flip, does anybody uh, want to take a crack at why we have to flip this? What, why is it that that always requires a flip? 
it's the inside of a box, right? So the inside, um, if you want it to be the outside, uh, we have to flip it. Now you can see that with an increased number of faces here, this means that now we will be able to, um, to smooth, right, this component. And here where it's really kind of um, a little bit like a donut, there's not a whole lot of fidelity uh, right in the opening, um, it will actually produce a much, much uh, more detailed um, uh, smoothing in that area. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And again, I'm just clicking these. I'm just going to set multiples in here. All right, so you can see there's a lot more smoothing, a lot more data in here now uh, to work with. So the actual output will be a mesh that has just a lot more definition. Now, likewise, um, one thing to, to think about, which is uh, pretty interesting, is you can also, um, for instance, select edges. So if I were to come over here and select these edges, and I scale this up, do that one more time, select these edges, and scale these up. Right, you can see that uh, whenever we move into Grasshopper, right, it will, in fact, um, take advantage of, uh, of all of that. Right, so you can see it accommodates all of, uh, of that that was just uh, performed. Okay. So that's a, a really interesting thing to, to take note of, um, you know, depending upon how you want to control your mesh, what it is you're trying to achieve, um, there are a lot of, uh, of, uh, of real easy ways to be able to kind of add in more faces, et cetera, um, uh, thereby uh, producing a, a kind of, a, a, I guess you could say, a, a different smooth uh, surface, so just depending on what it is that you're trying to to achieve here. So um, again, I'm just going to take this guy over really quickly so we can uh, see that here. Um, and so you can see that the, uh, that the mesh, right, um, the, the subdivision surface um, does in fact, um, as you can see here, accommodate for all of that, the kind of deformation that was um, produced you know, in, the, in the mesh primitive. All right. All right. So um, 